If you would, thanks for reminding me. Put your phones away. Give these guys your undivided attention for a few minutes. We have Ben Tech here to talk about some things in your future, possibly in your future. Um, before we do that, I want to say a couple of things. Not too long ago, we were walking into our building, wondering where everything was, who your teachers were going to be, how we get to your locker, and all this stuff. And now we're almost at the end of the first semester of your high school time with us. That being said, I tell people right around this time, if you are on the borderline of passing any of your classes, it would be a really good time to give your teachers formulated plan over the next 17 days at your home to try to get something finished. Hit that D minus if you have to, that's a passing grade, you know, I have to take that class again. Otherwise you're looking at credit recovery or something like that. So today you're going to hear from instructors and counselors out at EdTech, from EdTech about their program. This is not Thou Shalt Do This, it's an opportunity to hear more about what you offer. you hear from us again later on, when um, we start the schedule in January, more about dual enrollment and early college. Some kids say, well, I wouldn't go to EdTech because I'm going to go to college. Others say, I'm going to go to EdTech and get a really good job that helps me pay for college. So it's kind of how you look at it. What you hear today hopefully will help you determine whether you want to go on a tour at the end of um, January. What that looks like, what programs you might want to sign up for if you do such a thing. Okay? So if you have questions, make sure you ask. They give you opportunities to do that. And be respectful. Keep those phones away. Thank you. Good afternoon. Was lunch. All right. All right, it's good. <laughs> um, so thanks for having us. I'm Mrs. Spawn. I am one of the counselors at EdTech. And this is Mrs. Weingart. She is the other counselor at EdTech. And we are here to tell you a little bit about the different programs that we offer. Um, the video that you're going to watch in a moment just highlights and mentions some of those programs. And this website, the imedtech.org, offers videos for each of our programs. And I think the nice thing about these videos, they're short, two to three minutes, and the students from these programs explain to you what they like about their programs. So it's nice because you get to hear from the students' perspectives and possibly students, uh, former students that you may know, to see what their experience was like. Um, there's also alumni on there. Um, there's some more information that hopefully will help you to make a good decision if you decide to come to EdTech. So, if you choose that for next year, what that would look like is you would get on a bus in the morning, so you would come to look here, you would hop on the EdTech bus, and you would come to us until 10.05, and then you would come back, eat lunch, and have classes at look here. Okay? Um, the one thing I want to mention, our cosmetology program is a little bit different. They are not at our EdTech building. Cosmetology is offered at Grandin School of Cosmetology, which is in downtown up here, and you have to have your own transportation in order to attend that program. Also, it runs a little bit differently. They start at 11.30 and go to 2, as opposed to the morning, like you would attend as a first year as a junior. Um, and then for your senior year in any other program at EdTech, I didn't mention that, sorry, you would flip-flop. So, as a senior, you would go to look here at classes, lunch, and then attend EdTech in the afternoon. Okay? So, we are going to start with our award-winning instructor. Oh, after the video, sorry. Lunch got to my head, I guess. Two years later, what do you think about what's next? What are you going to do? Who are you going to be? And how will you make that happen? Right now, you go to school. You have books and teachers who are preparing you for the next step. But what if you could see that in a different way? What if you could try on a career? What if you could get your hands on the possibilities? Welcome to Lapeer County Education and Technology Center. We're giving students in Lapeer County hands-on education, taught by instructors who have worked in the industry. 
19 different classes, like automotive, culinary, information technology, digital media, public safety, health, cosmetology, welding, and more. Earn certification, find opportunities to get college credits, and make your dream career become a reality. Make your day at school anything but typical. Check our classes below. Then talk to your high school counselor to find out your perfect fit at Lapeer County Education and Technology Center. But before you go, don't forget to fill out the form for your chance to win. Alright, sorry I jumped ahead a bit. So in a moment, Mrs. Holiday is going to come up and speak to you. And she is our instructor for Digital Media Arts. So she's going to... Oh, no. Like, the price is right. Are you ready? She's the next contestant. Does anybody know that show? Or are we... Oh. All right. When we were sick, that's all we could watch on TV. Because there was no on demand. I know I'm bad. Um, so my name is Mrs. Holiday, and I teach digital media arts. Digital media arts, we teach audio, video, graphic design, and digital imaging. Before I came to teaching, though, I was actually working as a television news producer. Um, I started out in Kansas City, and then I um, worked my way up and um, was a television news producer in Detroit at WDIV Channel 4. So that's how I got my start. Like many of the teachers at EdTech, we actually didn't start out wanting to teach. <laughs> we worked in the industry, and now we're teaching what we did professionally. So digital media arts, audio, video, graphic design, and digital imaging. Um, the first year, you're going to learn the fundamentals. So if you come out as juniors, let's see Mr. Cobb. I turned it off again. Oh, no, I got it. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, the first year, you will come out and um, you'll learn the fundamentals. So I don't care if you've got like 4.5 million followers on TikTok and you're TikTok famous, or perhaps maybe you've taken the digital or the video course here, or maybe you've never done video before but you are interested in video and film. We start out at the basics, the foundations, the building blocks. So we learn about storytelling and what uh, it takes to make a video that people will want to watch for more than like three seconds, right? And so um, I teach you how to use, because um, you guys are really good at using your phones, but I also teach you how to use some professional equipment. And then we have the Adobe Suite, so we learn how to edit on Premiere Pro. We learn how to use After Effects, which is 3D and, or 2D animation for video and special effects. Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Lightroom, those are all the programs that we use in my class. And um, one of the things, so that first year, you're gonna, like my students in the morning, they just finished a commercial project, then more of a long format video project. Now we're doing sound, so we're doing Fully editing, which is adding the you know extra sound into movies, and then we're going to do some podcasting, and then we're going to do film, and then we're going to come in and do some portrait photography, and then we'll do some news, and we'll do some graphic design. So in the morning, we're learning something, doing a project, and then moving on. So the second year is where we're just taking what we learned that first year and just making project after project after project. So my students do produce, I wonder if my daughter is trying to die. There it goes. Um, a news magazine program, and you might recognize some faces. Um, so they create the open, they um, are the directors, the reporters, the producers. So they're doing all the writing, they do the anchoring, they do the reporting, they do all the video and all the graphics. And, and I just kind of sit back and let them go. And, um, and they're out there, they are the other. Daniel Guthrie is a Lapeer senior, so you might recognize him. Well, we might not be Jay. We're even better. So, um, yes, you can find this on our YouTube. Um, but that's one of the things the seniors do. 
um, is produce that news magazine program, amongst other things. We also do um, digital imaging. So how many of you guys have school picture taken this year or at some point in your life? Every hand goes up. And maybe your parents buy it on them, maybe they don't. We do the um, school photography for our special ed and preschool. So we, have work, we work with clients who um, are paying for pictures. So we try to take the best pictures we can of their children. And this is one of the pictures my students took. We also did a um, campaign last year for our open house, which is in January. If you're interested in that tech, you should come out to that. And I'll tell you the date of that. But it was the I Am Ed Tech campaign. So we went, and this is a, I believe, a LaPierre senior um, who was in the mechanical electrical plumbing. And we kind of just showed, um, took pictures of students who were in the different programs in their work attire. And um, we made the posters, did the graphic design. So that's another project that we did with photography. Um, I do realize that um, the way we consume media is different, right? It used to be, there used to be, like, we called it appointment television. And we still do that for sports, right? If you're going to watch the big Michigan game, you probably watch it while it's on. You don't watch it delayed. But for everything else, most of us don't watch things as they air on television. We stream them, right? And some of you probably watch them on your phones or your laptops in your room, not next to your parents. Like, you consume media in a different way. And so I'm teaching my students that sometimes we go to the movie theaters, right, to see media on the big screen, but sometimes we're watching it in the palm of our hands. So we need to learn how to create videos that can scale from that big to that small and keep us engaged and entertained. So we do maintain a social media platform um, that shares what we do, but it also helps with, we not only share our completed pieces, but we also, um, the light scared me, it's not in the dark anymore, but we also promote it. So coming up, this is what we're gonna do, and so we share. So we have a social media platform, you can find us at the Edge LC on all of the different platforms. So we have Facebook for your parents and grandparents. We have Instagram for your older sisters and brothers. Maybe you guys are Insta-famous, I'm not sure. I think it's like you're aging out. And then we have Snapchat and TikTok for our high school demographic. So these are just some of the things that we do in class as far as projects. So some of the alumni that have come through my program. So Tim Lahr um, was in Digital Media Arts. I really do think I might need a new battery. Um, and he went from my program straight out to LA. So he ended up getting his bachelor's degree out in LA. He um, works for Disney, and he works on the set, many of the, Mandal um, the set of the Mandalorian, and also many of the Marvel sets. Um, he has been on the show called The House. He was also a guest on the Kelly Clarkson show. He has a Screen Actors Guild um, union card, so that means he can be, even in LA, if you're an extra, you often have to be in the union, so he can be. And he's been working, because he really wants to go into film directing, so he's been producing shorts, so, and working on his career in that way. So here is some pictures of Tim out in LA, there he is on the Kelly Clarkson show, um, just doing what he does. And then, if, if you're aggressive, it works better. Um, this is Sarah White, she's a Northridge graduate, and she is a news photojournalist, so she is not in front of the camera, she is collecting the video behind the scenes, behind the reporters to help tell the story. She just won an Emmy Award this year for her coverage, she works at KPBR in Denver, Colorado, of the Marshall Fire, they had a huge wildfire out there, and she was part of the team that covered it, and she received an Emmy Award for her, for her work. Here are some recent graduates. I have students who go to community colleges. I have students who are at four-year universities. I have uh, one student who went to Full Sail University, which is a um, basically a media college in Orlando, Florida. So these are um, you know, uh, uh, some of the students who are continuing to study in the field. Again, 
Sorry about that. Okay, and then last but not least, some of the opportunities that you have in digital media arts. So um, we do field trips. We don't just stay in the classroom. Uh, and you can see uh, we go to, well, pre-COVID, we went to a lot of the television stations in Flint, um, Saginaw, and Channel 4 in Detroit. And now things are starting to become more normal again. Those places are opening up again. We recently, on November 29th, went on a field trip to the Potter Park Zoo. And you'd be like, why are you going to the zoo in late November? And it was actually because my students had an assignment for a contest. And they had to do a video about endangered animals. And the white-tailed deer, not endangered. And that's really, in Lapeer County, what you can get the most video of, right? <laughs> so we went to the zoo. We were able to talk to um, the zookeeper. And the students were able to film there's a tiger and a, a giant anteater. And so then they were able to complete their project with video that they were able to shoot. So that's, um, and then we also do, when we go to competitions, we don't just go to competitions, we kind of go out and explore. So that's a picture. Um, we went to Grand Rapids last year for state, and we went to the Meyer Gardens just to explore. Um, articulation and certification, all the classes at EdTech not just the three that are here today, have articulation agreements and certifications. And what does this mean for you? Well, it means that you have the opportunity. So many of my students have to go to a post-secondary. So they're, they're coming to my class, trying it out, seeing if they're interested in it, and then moving on to a post-secondary, so community college or college. But they've been with me for two years, two and a half hours a day, five days a week. They've learned a lot, so they don't need to go into the beginner course for video production or digital communication at some of those colleges and pay big bucks to take a class that they've already learned. Instead, what they do is they take a look at what I'm teaching them in my class, and they say, yeah, that kind of fits our first year course. So if you've taken DMA, you don't have to take this first year course. Instead, you're going to take the second course, the more advanced course, you do well on that, will give you the articulation credit for that first year course. So it's free college credit. Um, the other thing is certification. So you um, can take tests to see how well you do in the different softwares and things like that. I have a precision exams test that my students take. And also this summer I um, got my FAA drone pilot license. And you only have to be 16 to get a drone pilot license. And so um, if you're going to work, like anyone can fly a drone, but if you're going to work and get paid to fly the drone, you have to have an FAA license. So that's one of the things that we are um, implementing into the second year of the program. We're doing a lot of flying with our drone. And if students are interested, we're going to help them prep for that test. So um, at EdTech, we do not have sports teams. You have those that live here. You don't need them with us. So there's no football team, no basketball team. But we are very competitive. So we compete in our field of study. And so um, my students compete in a club called Business Professionals of America. And they compete in video production and news production and news broadcast production. And it has students who have been very successful. So um, it, below were our students at the state conference last year. We made it to the state conference in Grand Rapids, and that's in March for four days, and we spend the night in a hotel. And then um, if you win at the state competition, you make it to the national competition. In 2021, we placed fourth in the nation. Unfortunately, it was a virtual competition because of COVID. So um, last year, it was in Dallas, Texas, and in 2018, it was also in Dallas, Texas, and my students placed fifth. This year, it is in Anaheim, California. So we, are, um, we will be competing the last day of school before break, so on the 20th. My students and I will be at Saginaw Valley State University competing in our regional contest to see if we make it to the state contest. And um, uh, that's where we will be. And so hopefully, we will do well there, and we can do well at states, and then end up in April in California. Um, but you do not have to compete to travel in my class. Also in May, 
um, we will be headed to Chicago for a field trip. And anyone can go, it's not part of a competition. I usually do it every two years. This is the first year since COVID, so I did it last in 2019. So if you come out to EdTech, you wouldn't go until your senior year. But um, we tour Columbia College, which is an art school. We also um, do a little some touristy things. Last time we were there, Hamilton was in town. So we went to see Hamilton. And then we also meet with people who are working in the field that we're interested in. So we went to um, Channel 7, where one of my former coworkers from Channel 4 is now working. And so we toured Channel 7 and got to see the newscast. And then last but not least, you are going to see, if you, come, if you choose to come out and tour at Tech, this is a shot from our drone, you're going to see that um, there is some construction there. And we are actually expanding at Tech and adding um, two, uh, a wing for two classes. And my class happens to be lucky enough to be one of those classes. So, I think I need a new bathroom. There we go. Um, here it is. This is our studio. It's, well, this will be our studio. This is a rendering of our studio. It's twice the size of our current studio. And then there's our new classroom. And these are our control rooms and some storage. So we are very, very excited about the new construction at EdTech because it is allegedly going to be finished in May of 2023, which means it will be finished in like October, but that means we'll be in it next year. So um, that is a little bit about digital media arts. I'm going to pass it on over to Ms. Ross, who's going to tell you about the lucrative careers in IT net. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm Ms. Ross, and the program that I teach at EdTech is called IT net. So I want to share a little bit with you about what you might learn if you come to my class. Um, how many of you in the audience here, have you ever been tech support for a parent and an uncle, grandparent? Do they call you for help when the internet's not working or something's not booting up? Um, yeah, they call you for help. If you like that, you might want to consider some sort of a career in the tech area. Um, and that's what my program is all about. So let's. Let's check this out a little bit. Um, first, I want to show you a video of our curriculum. We are a Cisco Networking Academy. The, um, the material that we have is very gamified. It's very interactive, um, minimal. They're getting better with the reading. It's minimal reading, lots of interactive, drag and drop simulations. Um, and you earn digital badges as you're progressing through the material. So let me just show you a very short little video about the material. Cisco Networking Academy courses help you gain the knowledge, practice skills, and earn digital badges and certifications on the pathway to the career you want. Become a network engineer, software developer, or cybersecurity professional. within IT. You're going to get some exposure to Linux as an operating system. You're going to get some exposure to working with data. Um, there are careers in data analytics or data science. Networking is an area that you will get um, exposure to during your first year. So I wanted to show you a little bit about networking. What in the world even is networking? Um, we live in a connected world. Today, everything is connected. Our phones are connected to the internet, our tablets, our laptops. We have school labs that are connected. Um, even the NFL relies on networking professionals because of all of this connectivity. Um, so this gives you an idea here of the different career titles that networking professionals can hold and the average hourly wage that they earn. Um, I do have former students that work in networking. I have a North Branch student He's a network administrator for the FBI. Um, I have another North Branch student who started his own business up in North Branch. They had no internet. They had no good options for internet up in North Branch. 
Um, so this student created his own internet business and he sells broadband services to customers up in North Branch and that's called um, Northern Broadband. Um, but let me share you a video about networking and how the NFL relies on networking. Games. 
We look forward to game day where we play games to review some information. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Play plungeable, fly swatter, whatever crazy game I can think of. And I did want to mention um, we have the opportunity to make some, some lifelong friends if you come to EdTech. We have students from all over the Pierre County, so we're talking Elmont, Emily City, North Branch, Dryden. You're going to find that you're in class with students that have similar interests as you, and it's really neat to see how these lifelong friendships are built. And then um, finally on the opportunities, so this is just a small glimpse here of um, our lab, my lab at EdTech. Um, these, all of these computers were built by students. We custom build the computers in our lab every year. We do two per year. Um, they each have their own little unique hardware, unique personalities. We give them all names. Uh, for example, this one's the meme machine. Uh, Apollo. I think this red one here is Scorpion. Oh, we got Mario and Luigi up top. That tall white one over there, we call that one Stormtrooper. We've got one called Lawnmower. Um, but we build two every school year, so this is a really, really fun project that the students look forward to. Just like Mrs. Holiday, we compete. We compete in computer repair, in Linux, in Python, in C++, in networking, in security. Um, if you recognize those two students, they graduated last year from Lapeer, um, Brennan and Nick. Brennan actually won C++ in the state of Michigan. He was the first place gold medalist. Um, and they both got to go to nationals last year to Dallas. We also have articulation. So you will get college credit if you come to my program. You get to skip right out of a few classes at college. Um, and we do industry certifications as well. Every student will take an IT, Information Technology Specialist, industry exam, and hopefully earn a credential during high school. And then lastly, seniors, some seniors do have the opportunity to be placed in a work experience. Um, so instead of coming to class five days a week, I might send you to work and you'll go work in IT. Um, these are some of the companies where we have placed students in the past. So that is a really good opportunity to build some experience um, still in high school. So that's ITNet, and I would encourage you all to check out EdTech. Even if this is not the program for you, it gives you a chance to try out a career when you're in high school. So try it out, see if it's for you before you spend money pursuing it at the college level. All right, up, up next, Mr. Cobb is going to come talk to you about CAB. All right, who knows what CAB stands for? How did you do that? How did you know? Uh, my dad, a district manager at Nice. So, yeah. 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 But it also says it's true. Right. You'd be surprised how many people don't pick up on that. Right. So, okay, so we figured out the words that go with that. And what is it? Okay. What is that? What does it mean right now? And uh, yeah, there's some experience back there with that. Right? Anybody else? Go ahead. Kind of. Let's go around everybody. Everybody stand up real quick. Stand up. <laughs> I want you to, real quick, not real quick yet, but I want you to open your eyes and I want you to do a 360 degree spin and I want you to see as much as you can see. Pick up some objects as you can see. When you're done, sit down. Okay. Alright, now I'm going to ask you a question. Name me something that you saw, and I'm, I'm, I'm limiting this to non-living things. Name me something that you saw. Go ahead. The chair. Good. Spotlight. Anything else? Good. The what? The sound booth. Anything else? What about the bricks? What about the fire or the fire alarm? What about the exit sign? What about my little clicker here? What about my microphone? What about the shirt situation? The pants situation? The seats sitting in the carpet? The stairs? The stage? 
all of this stuff, my point is, is that somewhere, somebody, in some point in time, designed it. They had the idea, they designed it, they came up with the idea to solve some sort of a problem, right? And that's basically what my kids do in CAD. We solve problems, and we use the design process to do that with some help from some software. We do it in two different ways, mechanical design and um, architectural design. The first one is mechanical design. That's where we're dealing with everything that's like objects, the chairs, the clicker, the microphone, okay? All of these things are made up of many different parts. Like this clicker right here, or the phones in your pockets. Are those one piece? No, they're made up of many smaller pieces that fit together, and then they work together to do something, right? That's kind of what this is. Anybody know what this is? Go ahead. Almost. Trebuchet, right? If you don't know the difference between catapult and trebuchet, that's your homework, go ahead and go Google it. We do the trebuchet project in class, so I will give you some design parameters of how you need to make this, and I will give you a problem of what it needs to do. For instance, it needs to throw a golf ball 35 feet to hit a target or something like that. You would use your design process and then the software to go ahead and design individual pieces, and then the individual pieces would form together to form that assembly to do whatever you thought it was going to do. From that 3D model there, we can come up with our blueprints, which are the instructions on how to then build that or manufacture it, right? So that's the process in which something like this goes through. Somebody has the idea, they make a model of it, they make the blueprints, the blueprints goes on to manufacturing, and then the manufacturer makes it. In this particular project, if you are the manufacturer, you could actually build the trebuchet and see if it actually works. This is just an example of some of the projects we do. You can see the trebuchet right here. You can see those scale model houses too, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But you can also see some 3D printed parts up there. How many people know what 3D printing is? How many people have 3D printers at home? Yeah, a few of you, right? So this is a process where we can throw a design into a machine that looks like that. And then it produces a plastic part that you can either use as the end result or maybe a prototype to see if it actually works the way that you thought it was going to. Okay? We have five. 3D printers in my lab. Four of them are shown right here. We also have some other CNC equipment. We have a router here, and then we have a mill and another bigger router in um, some of our other programs that we have access to. Those are all the things that allow us to take pieces or parts from the virtual world on our computer and actually manufacture them and bring them into the actual world to see if they do what we thought they were going to do. Because if you think about it, in the computer, it's perfect world, right? There's no friction, there's no wind, there's no air, there's no Nothing to model up that design. But when we bring it into the real world, we have all of those things we have to deal with. So we have to kind of make sure and test and make sure that everything is good to go there. The flip side of that is architecture design. This is where we focus on the building of houses, the houses that we live in. Okay? And same type of deal here. We take the 3D software, we build a house, a 3D model to where you can flip it around, see all the materials. We go right down to the carpet, hang pictures on the walls even. Okay? From this 3D model, then we come up with the blueprints, which are the instructions for somebody to build this house, whether it be a general contractor or whoever. And that's in fact what we get to do. This house right here is a house that our construction trades program builds every year out in our parking lot. My students design it, come up with the floor plan, make the blueprints, hand those blueprints off to those students, and then they build the house. And of course, we can't build the house all the time, so when we have our intermediate projects or a little smaller projects, we do scale model houses here out of Balsa Wood. Those houses are about, about that big. Okay. Um, so those we can go through those a lot quicker and a lot less cost than actually building the house. Right? So the same process goes through though. We design it the exact same way if it was going to be a real house. And then we can take it a step further. How many people know what virtual reality is? How many people have headsets at home? Right? So this is where we can actually get in, wear this headset, and we can actually walk through the house before it's built in a virtual mode, right? So this is an example of uh, my CAD classroom to where we made this model and then we're gonna go ahead and play that in a second. You got um, where we're, my mechanical students went through and modeled all like the desks and the chairs and the computers and all that stuff. And then my architecture students went through and made the model of the actual room. So this is what you would be seeing if you actually had the virtual reality headset on. And obviously if you had the headset on, you would see where you're looking, right? It's responsive to where you're at. But this is just a walkthrough that we made um, 
kind of a representation. So think about this, if you're an architect going in the house with somebody, how cool would it be to have your client put this headset on, and you can walk them through this house in a virtual setting, and they can pick out some stuff that they maybe need to change or whatever. It's a lot easier to change it in a virtual setting than it is in the real setting. And then we have our opportunities, just like the other programs, we have certifications and um, articulations. This guy right here for me is the big one, the Autodesk, that's the company that makes the software that we use. So if you have the opportunity to be certified in that, that's so something that you can tell employers that, hey, I'm certified in this software, I don't need, or I already know the basics and I, I don't need to be trained from the bottom up on that. And that's kind of what employers are looking for nowadays. We do Skills USA as well, so um, my students usually do really well at the, uh, the regional. The thing about my competition is the students and I don't have any idea what the competition is until you actually get there. Uh, the judges will hand the students a piece of paper with the instructions on it. They'll have to produce whatever it is that paper says, and then they get judged from there. So it's a real test of the skills um, that, they, that they possess. And we always do really well at Skills USA. And then we have the work-based learning. You have the opportunity to be selected by your instructors to uh, do this program to where you would only come to your ed tech class twice a week. The other three days you would actually go and work, in my case, CAD related, and you would actually get paid. I have a student right now that's getting paid upward over $16 an hour. Instead of coming to school, they go to work and do CAD related stuff. So I'm um, just gotta make sure that you have good attendance, good grades, and all that stuff in order to be selected for all of that stuff, okay? Questions on anything? Not even cat related. Any questions on EdTech at all? No? No questions? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Speak up. Okay. Right, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, THA is actually the ones from Mrs. Holiday, the screen that she showed you as far as our um, edition. Yeah, THA is the ones that, that made those drawings. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Yes, it's the, I mean, we have another program in our building called Construction Trades where they learn how to build houses, and that's what they do, they build houses, so the students out there building the house, with the instruction actually, but yeah. yeah. Anything else? Okay. Alright guys, thank you for paying attention. Before you leave today, a couple of things. On that brochure in the back, it shows you all 18 